States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear my Father, we know that this day, 22 years ago, holds, uh, uh, unfortunately, a lot of uh, memory for many of us that, that we can recall exactly where we were or what we were doing or who we were with when the news uh, started coming out and, and this country was struck. And we just, we pray for continued healing upon those who are most affected by that day. We just pray for continued healing and strengthening and, and we also pray not that you would help us remember or to to forget anyone, but just to to cherish the life that we have, the freedom that we have, to cherish one another, to be thankful for those that protect us, firemen, policemen, military. Just thank you for those who serve, those who sacrifice, those who continue to sacrifice. Thank you that we live in a country where we can express ourselves and, and, and love one another and, and care for one another and, and not live in fear. And we pray for your guidance and strength upon not just this community, but this country to help lead us forward and to help us always make decisions, whether it be for a community, a city, or a state, or a nation, or a family, or a school. Help us make the decisions that best reflect you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, guys, you certainly don't have to sit there. You're welcome. Thank you. Appreciate it. I need you to talk to you. Jan, if you would, we'll call. Brandon. Brandon no more. Present. Here. Mason Brewer. Here. 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 All right. We have a special presenter this morning, or this afternoon, this evening. Sheesh. Um, Sarah, Black, if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and take a... Uh... Well, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak this evening. Um, I just wanted to kind of give the board an update, or the council an update of what we are in the process of at the school. Um, the school has started something called Workforce Wednesday, where students select a um, path that they want to explore more, and on Wednesdays, uh, they have three blocks and they last each about two hours each. And one of the blocks that um, I am pursuing along with Miss Likens at the high school is what we call Playground Paradise. And we have just under 30 students who signed up for our block and our goal is to help and collaborate with the city to improve our parks. Um, Playground encompasses more than just playground equipment. It's, um, you know, our, our community can be a playground. And so we're looking for more than just playground equipment, but we're, we're focusing on playground equipment, splash pad, dog park, um, you know, basketball courts, anything that we can do uh, to collaborate and help uh, the students with the, the city. So we're looking forward to it. Um, the students have already jumped in. We were already a couple weeks into this. They're um, getting demographic information so they can start writing grants. Um, they're going to be preparing letters and information so they can do presentations. In fact, they're going to come up here and do a presentation as soon as they get that all worked out uh, to the council um, of what their plans are for the future. So I just wanted to uh, kind of give you a, an update on that and introduce that. And I would be happy to answer questions if you guys have any. Well, kind of put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no one. I think this is just phenomenal. I think it's fantastic because that's what I've been trying to do and what we need to do is get as many people ingrained into community as much as possible and what really goes on, what it takes to, to make everything better. Mm -hmm. And so thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I know for a fact the kids have just been a tremendous help in your fast as a faculty with like the lights out the park. Right. Um, so I just, it's a godsend. So what has been your... Um, uh, thoughts so far? What have you observed from the kids in terms of just their ideas, their thoughts, you know, some of the things they've either said or want to do? You know, what, what's been your take so far? I would say that when they first came in, they jumped in um, pretty quickly. They were really excited. They've already created a list of people that they want to contact um, for donations, um, ways that they're going to reach out to community members. 
um, people there there have been asking and I think you've received one for a letter of recommendation yes. to yeah. apply for grants so they're going to be searching for grants they just um, I they they had no idea what they were going to be doing when they came in just that we were looking to help to improve and collaborate with the city and help to improve our, our parks and our playgrounds and things like that so they've really just jumped in um, and Mr. Shoemaker has been with us too on Wednesdays helping to lead them and answer questions and there he he probably can attest that there have been multiple questions about well, what about this and what about this and how do we do this and um, so they're they're really embracing the opportunity. Awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. Guys, they've set a goal to raise $1.5 million for our park. It's just awesome. And yeah, they really are, cool. in the two cool. weeks we've met, they're unbelievably engaged, they're aggressive, they're learning about marketing, they're, they're you know, creating a brand for, for the park, for Playground Paradise, and it, it's, it's pretty exciting. And, and when HWC comes in behind them to write the big grant, it's it's going to be good narrative that they're going to be able to include in, in yep. our proposal. Yep. So yeah. does any of this incorporate anything that Ball State did? Um, you know, with their presentation, they, they have our trail plan. Um, Playground Paradise is not focusing on the trail, but they do have our our trail plan. And yes, the trail plan is interconnected to the park. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. So. Specifically, they're focusing on the, the activity area, the pool, the playground initially, but um, it, I, I don't think it's going to go away. I think overall the school feels this program is pretty successful, and I would see it growing and, and kind of emerging over the years. Yeah, our goal is that um, this is where we're starting, but every year we can focus on something different. So each year we can continue to have what we call Playground Paradise. Uh, but maybe focus on, you know, it, whether it's helping to put benches along the, the walkway or improve the dog park or um, something specific. That's our goal is that we'll be able to continue with helping to collaborate. Yeah, very good. good. More of a comment than a, than a question, but any time we have these uh, grant initiatives, one of the things we always get into is we're in a, in a public hearing setting and we have to work pretty hard to get public comment you know mm -hmm. there's we don't run it's not because the public's negative it's because the public just isn't used to standing up and right. saying their name and making their comments right. you have a few vote people that are you know Bob Gentry is one here that's always been uh, supportive and, and, and been with the initiatives but there's not a groundswell of people to do that and I think having the, the having the kids in that position is, could be very, very helpful yeah, in that. Big time. In, in yeah. terms of what we do. Yeah, to Steve's, I agree. Yeah, because along with Steve's point too, it just that bodes well in our grant initiative having the youth involved. Yeah. So that's, yeah, absolutely. Maybe some of that will wear off on the parents too. Yeah, amen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for setting me back. Yeah. I think this is just an excellent idea. I, I mean, do too. You know, the, the, the fact that you don't have to, a <coughs> student doesn't have to sit in a, in a classroom setting for seven periods a day. I mean, yeah. that's obviously a part of their educational experience, but, you know, this service learning type aspect of their education is going to be huge. I mean, it's probably some, will be some of the more um, remembered parts of their education, honestly, and it'd be a practical experience with, you know, their thumbprint on, you know, out there on the park um, that they'll they'll probably remember for the rest of their lives, honestly. Yeah. I think it's huge. Um, and, and we'll do nothing but improve our, our city and our, our community as a whole. So I, I applaud what you guys are doing. <laughs> yeah, it's very good. Anything else? Well, thank, thank you. you. No, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like, because it could be like, he'd be saying, you know, if we get done for that, it could be like a history, you know, start up history mm -hmm. for the school from like pre-K where I'm at. You know, once they get to high school, look, you know, this is what you can achieve, you know, this is what you can do, this is something you are a part of too, yeah. can be a part of. And like, it's awesome that the students are standing up because I have so many people saying that about wanting to update the park, number one. Okay, so why are you not at this meeting? You know, yeah. Why are you not? Yeah. Yeah. They don't want to hear us. They don't, they're not listening to yes, us. Yes, we do. Listen to us. <laughs> <laughs> it just it took time. Yeah. You know, because yeah. I don't know how many times I've come at, you know, park, 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 and I've talked to you, and I've talked to Steve, you know, a couple of times, you know, just walking around, you know, see where I'm talking, hey, you know, oh, by the way, you know, the park, what do you think, you know, and 
and this is, it took a while, but we're here, you know, and that's what it takes and for the students to be able to do it. And the adults was just like, oh, they're not gonna hear us. Well, hopefully that everyone, you know, they're hearing us now, you know, it took maybe, you know, it was just in time, you know, and it's here now, so it's on. Yep, we know it's a process, so we're willing to be a part of that, so. Yeah, and that's an awesome thing too, just to pull the curtain back for them and see what goes on in what's involved. Right. It's not just like this, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Invite right. right. them to the board of works meeting. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. That's on Mondays at one. At second yeah. Yeah. Fourth. Same yeah. same day as the council meeting. We'd be happy to to, okay. to have. I'm sure we can arrange something for them to come. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, great idea. Is that, and I mean, is it they, whether they want to present or sh just share their ideas yep. or whatever the case, because I mean, they're going to. Can't hurt, might help. Exactly. That's mm -hmm. right. So, That's a great idea. Thank you. Uh, keep, keep on keeping on. That's the goal. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you. All right. Well, thank you guys. Thank I've got to go pick my daughter thank up you. from the end. So thanks for <laughs> letting me speak at the You're beginning. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Yeah, that's why we made a last minute shift. Um, Consent agenda. I trust you guys have an opportunity for, to review the consent agenda. And are there any questions or comments? And if not, I would entertain a motion. I move that we accept the consent agenda as presented. We have a first, we have a second. No second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Consent agenda approved as presented. Um, We've covered the presenter. So, department reports, just a couple things in my end. I want to give a big hats off to Christy Wells. Um, she informed me this morning they she had applied to a Walmart community grant for $2,500 for the Heroes Holiday Heroes program, which, if you recall, is the toys for kids. Or, well, that probably goes beyond toys, it's just things that kids need for Christmas. And was awarded the grant. So hats off to Christy and hats off to Walmart, certainly, for making that available to communities. So a, a $2,500 community grant for Holiday Heroes Program, which to her words, you know, helps them immensely, you know, hit the ground oh, running. Yeah. Um, so that was wonderful. Uh, another one, thanks to um, Charlene and all those that participate in running the Veterans uh, Benefit Concert over the weekend on Saturday. Um, Appreciate that it's an inaugural one, and they're going to learn from from that and learn to make you know what they need to do differently and what they want to you know expand upon to to get it you know make it bigger and better each year so that more veterans can benefit certainly. Um, and then the cars and coffee, Jason, as always, thank you for that yeah. Saturday morning. I was working at the park. I come in to get the music going and grab something uptown and. I was impressed. There was a lot of folks Give it a, milling about. 18, 18 cars showed up. And again, thanks to Hometown Coffee for providing everyone with free coffee, as always. Awesome. Um, Roots Deli, Corner Cupboard for donated gift certific certificates. It's, it goes a long way. People are so excited when they get a simple gift certificate. They just yeah. are shocked. Oh, thank you so much. And it means a lot. So awesome. thanks to everybody. Uh, keep coming back, too. Getting people into town. So that's awesome. Um, Jen. Okay. Um, council members, Tim, we'll start with you. Uh, I don't have anything. Jason? Nope. Bob? Uh, the only thing I have is the uh, Area Planning Commission meeting next Wednesday night okay. in, in, in Winchester at the, I guess it would be the old, the old hospital building mm -hmm. there if anybody, and that's all I have. Okay. Thank you. And that's at what time? So it's 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. Yeah. Very good. Uh, Brandon? Uh, nothing this evening. All right. Yeah, I should go back. You should. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Um, we have our uh, budget hearing the next mm -hmm. meeting, so everybody needs to be here. September 25th. September 25th, yeah. And I will be sending out um, the proposed budget sometime this week, so you can start looking it over before that meeting. That's all I have. Um, oh crap, now you just dropped my name. I'm talking more <laughs> um, The end of this month, I actually got an invite to present at Muncie. Uh, they have a big gathering over there, um, and they're asking me to present for Vision Corner. Um, so I'll be 
uh, basically sharing how that project you know was launched and where we're at and the how pivotal ready round one was in it and how hugely critical ready 2.0 is to help us finish and get across the finish line. So, um, so just a heads up there, that's September, it's last week in September. Um, but that was just kind of, I thought it was humbled by that because I mean, we, the word's getting out you know, about the project. So, um, Steve, anything? Uh, Community Fellowship Church has asked that um, we provide them sewage and water. Uh, they're at the corner of Jackson Pike and 28. Um, they're looking at having no option but to replace their sanitary system. And they, they want to know if the city's interested. The Board of Works has authorized me to do a pre preliminary engineering report to see what the feasibility is. I just want to let you guys know that I'm going to be reaching out probably to RQAW. Um, they're our engineer on call uh, firm, so we'll probably reach out to them and start that process for a PER. Mm -hmm. Typically, uh, those are anywhere from seven to ten thousand dollars. I'm going to tell him to keep it below ten um, and see if he'll do it for that. So, um, just let you know. I think the project is very beneficial. I think it has some long-term benefits as well. But I think it's going to be expensive. Okay. So, anything else? Uh, nope. Okay. Um, Josiah's not here this evening. Uh, old biz, old business, which is ordinance twenty twenty three thirteen dash thirteen, which is the handicap parking ordinance. This is on the second reading. There have been no changes since the first uh, reading, and it's approval. So do we have any questions or comments on that? If not, I would entertain a motion. I'll move we accept ordinance 2023-13 uh, amendment or handicap parking ordinance uh, with, on second reading. We have a first, we have a second. I'll second. Bob? Yep, Bob. Uh, yep. Brandon yes. 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 All right. And then with new business, I would very happily turn it over to Ms. Pam, if you don't mind, if you would like to. Yeah, if you go, well, wherever. You can present from there if you Actually, want, or if you want to come up here. Yeah, you, you're good. My papers. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, so thanks for having me to the meeting tonight. Um, I am the new director of the Arts Association of Randolph County. And it's housed at our historic Arts Depot building here in Union City, which we are so happy to have. And it's just a joy to work there. Um, last year, the City Council helped us with uh, financing. Um, they granted us, I believe it was $10,000. And um, so I'm just here to present kind of what my goals are and what I'm thinking kind of big picture items for next year. I do have to say that I do have all of 2024 booked already. Um, I have some at least one thing every month for next year um, so that makes me very excited um, one of the things that we do is we reach out to the entire county to support art and art activities in fact I kind of added for our 70th year which it is the Arts um, Association 70th year that we're your headquarters for art and art experiences and so we want to bring those things to our neighbors and the community here, not only in Union City, but throughout the county. Um, and that's a pretty big area, I'm finding out. So um, what my main objectives, though, for the future are to, stri to strive to provide no cost or low cost opportunities to experience the arts. That is super important to me because I don't want to keep anyone away from those experiences or seeing art or experiencing workshops or ways to um, ways to, oh, words, um, I'm nervous, I, I beg your pardon, so um, ways to express themselves. I think that's super important for us, and in a world where we're on our screens all the time and artificial intelligence is a new thing, I think people are really going to crave those hands-on experiences with their friends, with schoolmates, with family, and those are the things we want to promote. Um, another thing I want to do, obviously, is communicate those opportunities throughout the county. 
and provide new and diverse experiences for the community. And I, I have several things here. So our first goal, um, which is the no, and low the no cost and low cost programming, that's extremely important, um, especially in an economy that's become more challenging, I think, to everyone. Um, I, don't want any, I don't want anyone to ever think they can't come and experience things and programs that we have. Um, I feel our operating expenses are in the most need of financial help. Uh, for instance, the upkeep of the historic building, the utilities, assorted other expenses that come along with that. Um, in fact, we have a lot of incurred pricing, um, incurred costs in the printing of all our own marketing materials, which I design and we print all in-house. That's a big deal and I think it really helps um, to keep that technology updated, functional, and dependable. Um, one of the things, challenges I have found in the last, I've only been there four months, uh, we had a show that was up last month and the artist came to get his stuff and some of the work he did was done in dyes instead of paints and he picked up one he goes, ooh, this, this particular piece looks like it's been running a bit and I think it's a humidity problem. Uh, so, you know, this is the kind of things that we deal with probably with older buildings a lot. So we're going to kind of look into getting some dehumidifiers in there so we can actually have art and people feel, you know, protected. confident <laughs> and their art feels protected. So that was one thing that was su super interesting to find out. Um, and then I will do quickly just some of the big picture items for next year um, or explain those. So um, I wrote a grant for Eclipse funding for a workshop we're going to do and I am... Um, and partnering with, partnering with all the libraries in the county. So uh, we'll travel to these libraries and do workshops with kids and their families. And instead of just handing out um, safety glasses, we're gonna actually do the old fashioned viewing boxes like I did in school. So families can make those things and we'll talk a little bit about what other cultures and through history, what, how other people and cultures explained the eclipse. So I'm actually commissioning a children's book written especially for that program. And we'll read that and we'll talk to the participants about how would they, in an imaginative way, explain the eclipse to someone if we didn't have all the science, etc. And we'll send those folks home with worksheets that hopefully would um, encourage them to share their activities and even host their own viewing parties at home. Because we know, since we're all in the path of the eclipse, how crazy it's going to be. So I'm hoping this will give people who might not necessarily want to be out in crowds to enjoy the, and meaningfully enjoy the eclipse in a safe way. Uh, the other thing that I'm working on is what I'm calling Birds and Bees Pollinator Initiative. Uh, we have some existing garden beds around the building that are in serious need of repair. And um, I think since we do rent our space out once in a while for special occasions, this not, will not only beautify the building, it will give, like if there are weddings, if there are receptions there, it will give us a whole new photo op for that. And it will be beautiful. And also, it will, I think it will give a little bit more life to the building. I sit there a lot of times during the day and don't see very many people. Of course, our hours are when everyone else is working. But um, I have had people stop by, and they stop by not to see the art, but because, oh, it's a historic building, but they have no idea we're there. I think that adding that kind of life around the building will really help encourage people to stop by. And plus, you know, gardening is an art as well. So I've been um, talking to local garden clubs, and we're also partnering with a gardener. His name is Richard Davis, and he's going to plant all those for us for free using seeds from his garden, which is an awesome opportunity. Um, the last thing I really want to do um, next year is, I'm going to call it right now, the creative library space. And what that will mean is that that whole building has to be cleaned up and organized in a very efficient way. So I want to have one alcove of the building be a space for kids and, well, for anyone who wants to come and get inspired, do art projects, um, explore. We have a really good art library already existing but the space is not really set up quite in a comfortable, nice, inviting way for those folks. So we are actually talking to other libraries about having a card catalog of creative things. So if someone wants to look up painting projects, they can look in this catalog, pull one, 
and will be so organized that they can bring the card to us and say, I want to do this project. And we'll be able to pull all those pieces and say, here you go, you can do it here, you can take it home. And we'll have all sorts of things. Maybe we'll have sewing projects eventually, fiber work, uh, clay work. But I want to have those things readily available and organized so we could provide that for people. And um, you know, maybe they want to think up their own project. And then we can pull those for them. And then we can put each one of those new projects in our card catalog to grow that. Uh, so those are just some of the things I'm looking at for next year. They're bigger projects. Um, and it's, you know, it's a lot of like feet on the ground stuff that we have to do. And we have a lot of things that have been stored there for a very long time. And I feel like if we were more efficient, then we could do a lot more things. So does anyone have any questions? I know I was talking quickly. I get super excited and I have like tons and tons of projects written down, which I'll leave with you guys to look at. But does anyone have any questions about the organization? Um, like we would, I didn't know that it's like it's free to the community to come in there. Or you like you were talking about free or right price, like for money. Because like we drive by there, and I said like kids art day or something, and my kids are see it because one of my children can read now. He's at that age. I'm like I don't know, you know what's going on in there. So we just don't know because we don't know. And we've been here forever in this community, but I have honestly have. Well, one, I'm trying to keep the signage updated in front. That's one thing, because I know people drive by there a lot. I do a lot of hosting and you know, doing Facebook events. That's one thing. We're going to try and get into the schools to advertise that. So teachers know, you know, according to the age groups that the workshops are for, that they know about it way in advance. For instance, the kids' camp was super successful this year. We had a, you know, 30, 34 kids a day coming. So it was packed full of people, but we also passed out surveys to all the parents saying, what could we do to make it better? How could we get you signed up earlier? And all of them said, go into the schools and try and get those, that information to the teachers. I think that's one thing we can do. I also call the News Gazette all the time, so our events are usually listed in there. But we do have to do a better job. Steve, the school event calendar that you talked about, us lining up with with the city there's we can there's no reason why we couldn't line up the art association as well is there we just have to get access to the, the platform and we've not successfully got that yet I don't know if it's even possible but in theory yes okay what's the platform it's called event link it's what the school uses for their scheduling oh yeah okay and so I mean because we're trying to coordinate something that would be a one-stop shop for everybody so students mm -hmm. parents grandparents people living home by themselves that have no kids right to hop on this link and know everything that's going on with the school and the city and uh, hence the art association yeah I think that's great I, go ahead um, can you do that through the city's website to, to understand you're going to have somebody working on it to keep it updated if we could it hook to the event link which is that? A, that's a separate entity, isn't it? Event link. So it's just we're just exploring to see if we could collaborate with the school's calendar, but yes, we can have our own calendar. The school event link. does. Also they on that event link. Yeah. They schedule everything through event link. It's an app that basically every parent, every kid, everybody. It's how they schedule practice. It's how they schedule everything. Right. right? The book fair. It's on event link. What we're asking is that we have access to their platform to commit to create basically a city or a community page right that's linked to event link so when you are connected to event link you can see the school calendar you can see the city calendar who's trying to see if that's navigatable is it Aaron or we had the conversation with Aaron and I think it was flown through the athletic department okay. because that's who off it works so through the Mike Mike Mike, yeah. off all the Mike. <coughs> On that note, I have a question. Like, say there's people that does not have Facebook, that don't have, you know, all that. Your older generation, or even like just other people that does not go on Facebook or just websites or anything. What about a newsletter? Not like a newsletter, but like a community calendar. Like we were talking about with this, um, the whole park thing and stuff. Community calendar, like everything for the arts, for the school, for the park, for just, just like, things that's going around the town. Know, just like, like how you give to Waterbury, but some stuff on the back, but some things don't make it on there. Yeah. You know? um, 
you know, like a QR code. Well, of course it. Mm -hmm. Or if, like, it's available at the, at the when they come to pay their water bill because they're going to have to pay their yeah, water bill besides, yeah. besides people in the country, you know. Put them in the water bill. But, I mean, at least it's more accessible, you know, more available to the people. Yeah. The biggest challenge is always the people that aren't, aren't technology yeah, aligned yeah. and driven yeah. and, and aren't using apps and, and, and even, you know, some, there are a lot of people that aren't even using Facebook, for example. Yeah, and, and this was it through Facebook, right? The event link. It's not a Facebook yeah, thing, but, so but I mean, they're, they're not even to that point. Yeah, so they're just right. They're not internet savvy. They're not online. They're not doing anything. Which, so that's which puts us back into conventional yeah, I know. communication, which is tough because the newspaper is not doing. You don't have the it's people don't dangerous. access the newspaper right. like you used to. Right. It used to be you pick up the paper, you get all the community events, and it's just not universal like that anymore. Um, which is what you're trying to create. We need to brainstorm this to see what would be because I mean we've got the sign out here and then we've got like Steve's had the signs made on the street that has all the events at Arvison mm -hmm. Crossing that stay out for what five months those are out for um, but again they don't catch everything obviously but um, we need to brainstorm this and see if we can't come up with something it, it may almost be a I don't know almost to the point of having to put a message on the sign at the fire department to Stop at the city building to pick up your printed calendar. Or <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I'm just, I'm just. Or an easel out front here says or, yeah. yearly calendar or community or, monthly calendar. Just, just bill because there's some people yeah. that just aren't going to be able to put them in the water bill. Yeah. Well, the stuff's in the water bill. Yeah, there's but, stuff, you know, on the back but, of the bill now. Yeah. The, the beauty of the technology is that it, it's it's active. It's moving all right. the time. It's, it's updated fluid. all the time. It's fluid. Right. But it's hard to do that in a analog form. Yeah. Yeah. Well. The hardest thing I think is you have to have the information coming to us because well, right, I don't yeah. solicit no, no. the information. When I do the back of the bills, no, this is like this on. is something yeah. that has yeah. to be so, right. Yeah. And this is going to be a similar thing unless you're going to have somebody. You're still not going to get everything. I don't know how you can get people to you know. And plus, I can't put everything on the back. No, of right. no, yeah. no. no. Right. I was talking maybe I, like although you could put a list of stuff. An extra sheet. Um, but you couldn't go into detail. Right, right. There's not yeah. enough room. So if you're going to do a separate calendar, you got to, who's going to do that? That's what, well, that's uh, the person we have to start on the 18th. Um, she's going to take an active role on our website. And so if she could design, if we could design a QR code that we could put on the back of the water bill, at least that would be one thing. And granted, it wouldn't be everybody that has a phone, but. Good Lord, I hope 98% of the people at least have a phone now, because I'm... That's... Uh, Do you have a cell phone? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say you have a cell phone. No, no, no. Like, QR code, like, for our apps at the store, you know, people are like, a lot of the older generation, I don't even have a phone. Like, no, I have a phone, like, their phone well, is a flip phone or something. They, have a, yeah. they are not up to date with that kind of stuff, and they don't yeah. want to. They're good with their... Their ways. Yeah. Which again, that's where if we have a printout here. The older yeah, I was gonna say Bob, Bob, Bob actually he uses this phone all the time. So um, we can have a printout here and, and available. But I still think that you've got to say. Yeah, you know, what? That's, that's just a minor part of it. So she'll she'll be the one. Yeah, she would do that. Not that's not on your plate. Yeah. But she we just do like she'll just do a hard copy list of all the events month to month and. And then what we'll fine print at the bottom does please know these are subject to change based on weather, based on new events that come down the pipe, you name it. Um, that would catch a lot of people, like you say, that really don't yeah. use it for. Yeah. And like on the back of the bill, your water bill, like I said earlier, I don't even look half the time on the back of my bill. I just hang out in the refrigerator, I don't right. have a bill. You know, that's it. I don't Of course now. Could you do me a favor and check the back of your water bill at least for the next couple months? Thank you. <laughs> yes. I had a local businessman call me up and ask me how to get a hold of the water department. And I said, do you have your water bill? And he said, yeah. I said, well, turn it over. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it is still on there, isn't it? No, it's still on there. Okay. It's, yeah. it's a little frustrating yeah. sometimes. Uh, yeah. But I do think the idea of the of, of an easel type, the thing that, that you've got your 
your music on that, yep. that easel type. If you put that out in front and say, come inside and get a, uh, yeah. just a sheet of paper with everything on it. Yep. Uh, which the young lady that's going to be working on the website on the sign. wouldn't have that much trouble creating oh, no. No, that. 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 I mean, that's something that, that could be done rather easily. Yeah, I agree. And you could be on that along with every other organization. I think, yep. I think, the that's overall, a great, that's a I think the overall concept of getting all of these into a, a singular a form, calendar. a master list where, and, and I mean, ideally, an app on your phone where it pops up, hey, yeah. you know, at yeah. this point in time, this event's happening. And, and because a lot of times it's like, oh, yeah, that I, I forgot about that event. What is that? Yeah. And, yep. Yeah, and that, that's why I would love, I'm, I'll be getting with Mike this evening, because I would love for us to be able to coordinate with the school if possible, so I, every, as many people as possible know. That's just our goal, and obviously it's not always going to be possible, but, um, yeah, Teresa. Sorry, I'm no. glad that, like, because you know we have a lot of Hispanic community. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't have to put, because it's going to be a lot, I already know. You don't have to put everything in Spanish, but, like, all is welcome. Yep. Don't yep. in videos, you and know. It, yeah, absolutely. Simple, you know? Absolutely. Like, yeah. just everyone's welcome in Spanish, you know, like, so there's that one little, there's a couple little words in Spanish, then you're going to get your Spanish to If possible, I don't know, because we've got to make sure the font's big enough. I was going to say, if we could do, like, a front and back, front English, back yeah. thing, or vice versa, you know, that way either side you're covered. But um, we'll cover this with Monique, and I'll, I'll put in my notes, and we'll get the ball rolling. But I'll contact Mike tonight. So sorry, we kind of hijacked your thing. That's all right. That's all super important to me, too, right? Because if no one knows about it, no one's going to show up. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Do um, you guys have questions for Pam? Uh, Budget-wise, um, so 10000 is what we allotted last year. Mm -hmm. um, did you have, do you have any insight as to what, like, did the county, were they participants last year to any degree do we have any insight do you have any insight to that by chance well i know that i'm i have a couple things to write for um winchester town um council i think okay uh, so we have a couple things that come in from them okay. uh, the other communities i'm trying to find out who to call and who right. to talk to yeah, um yeah. but we get an iac grant usually every year that helps yeah. support us as well community foundation do they play a role Yes, okay. Okay. yes, yes, yes. Um, we're not in the fall cycle. We did the spring cycle. Okay. So, um, okay. But we've been going along. I mean, the organization's been going along like this for a while. Okay. And in order to, yeah. we need more. Right. And, um, I mean, that's very obvious. And, you know, we, we do really well, and we're super efficient with what we have. Mm -hmm. and, um, but we're not a big organization. Right. And I, I don't want it to become so big that it, you know, keeps people away either. So I want to grow in a meaningful way that includes the, you know, the community. I think bringing the youth is huge. And the well, yes, the youth because yeah. if you bring the youth in, the adults come along because yeah. they want to see what yeah. their kids did, yeah. and it's, it's super important. And then you know, if if people get interested in the arts when they're younger, they don't necessarily have to be professional artists ever, yeah. but I think it's just a a well-rounded person appreciates the arts yeah. and can enjoy it on their own. Um, so if you get that to them early, they'll keep it going. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think, was it the Garrett girl that was the first one to display her art at the coffee shop? Or one of the first ones? Was that her, is that her last thing? A student here? She, I mean, it's some of the most phenomenal art I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. It was outstanding. I think I own a couple of her pieces. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. 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 High school student, and she just she incredibly did it. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So, um, do you guys have any, any thoughts or questions or anything? I mean, do you want to, do you feel up to making a motion this evening or do you want to do some research and come back to the next council meeting or what, how do you guys want to navigate this? So my understanding is we, we donated $10,000 last year. Mm -hmm. and was that out of what funds? Did we have funds available still? It's probably out of city projects or um, we don't have an art line. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, we'd have to do additional preparation. Um, if we pulled out city projects, I don't know what we 
we could ch we could definitely check that to see what we actually did pull out of last year. Although it was probably probably worth that. Yeah, I can check that. I can email you all, find out what we took it out of and how much it was. Yes, sir. We know it's ten thousand. Let me say something. <laughs> I don't remember either. I don't either. Um, yeah, I'm like a, a little more than an educated NPS on what we can yeah. do. Yeah. So September 25th, we'll look to. Yeah, sounds I, good. I think it's probably uh, probably a consensus that we want to try to support them. In, in, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, I ran out several sheets of information. If, you know, anyone wants to read them. Because I'm sure I skipped over yeah. some. We had, we had a bit of information in a package. Yeah, I did send, oh, well, so I sent a couple things you sent me, I sent on to them. Okay. That's fantastic. That's so exactly So I want to make sure you had. Yeah, we got yeah. a good yeah. yeah. I so, love handouts. Yeah, <laughs> that's all right. Better prepared than not. Awesome. Okay. Uh, Pam, thank you so well, much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any visitors wishing to address the council? If so, please stay and state your name, address, and nature of business. Hey, I got one more thing. I kind oh, of forgot. Sorry. Good. Um, I, I, I'm not sure why I didn't remember this. So, um, we are getting ready to hire a detective at the police department. We're going to do it collaboratively with the high side. Um, we're entering into a memo of understanding, and we need your permission to do so. To basically. Uh, offer conditional employment to a seasoned detective that will um, office out of Union City, Indiana, um, be technically employed full time by Union City, Ohio for pension reasons, um, employed as a part time officer here so he can drive our vehicle. And um, I know it sounds kind of strange, but it saves us 30% and it puts a seasoned veteran officer on the street doing our investigations. So um, the budget dollars are already appropriated for the detective salary. It's just a matter of approving the process of entering into the MOU. So it's presented to the Board of Works and I don't know why I spaced it when I was sitting here. So how is the salary split? I mean, is there a split between? Yeah, basically. Um, 70 percent will come from Union in, in City, Indiana. 30 percent will come from Union City, Ohio. That's based on population. And for for lack of more detail, it's it's we will pay his pay and they'll pay his benefit packages, insurance, and retirement. Roughly. So they're not paying any of his salary. They're just paying his benefits. Theoretically, it's the the MOU will break it down to a dollar amount, but in simple terms, that's what it boils down to. And that and that works. I mean, with this the state to have a pension plan for an employee who's technically employed by another. Technically, he'll be a state. Union City, Ohio employee. We will be paying the village of Union City, Ohio a set amount four times a year to employ this gentleman. He will work out of our office. He will be um, through the ILEA Academy, <coughs> Indiana Law Enforcement Academy, by testing out of the process, which is perfectly acceptable for somebody that's already been through a police academy. And he will be dual credentialed for both departments. The only reason at all that he's not coming over here is he's too old. He's retired out of the Ohio pension system. He's going to go back into the Ohio pension system, which is allowed. He's too old to meet the age requirements for the Indiana pension. pension. Yeah. Or we would put him into our pension system over here, but his age precludes that. So do you think that setup would be the way we would do it on future hires, or is that just a case-by-case -case basis? I think it's a case-by-case -case basis. We're, we're focusing on replacing our detective. 
he's not a patrol officer okay. in, in, in that sense. So he's working cases outside of the normal police activity. So I, I think for sure for that, that hire, I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, Kyle Thacker, who just recently left, we hired him as a detective with the intent that he was going to be employed by Union City, Indiana, but take on cases for Union City, Ohio at the same time. So, so <coughs> we had already started that process and Kyle had already made inroads to going to the Opata, which is the Ohio Police Academy. Um, all those things were already in process when Kyle decided to, to leave law enforcement. So um, I, I think it makes sense for a position like a detective, for sure. I don't think it makes sense for every rank and file position. Absolutely. So you need something from us tonight? For I, I just need your permission to detail the MOU and enter into that agreement. You good with that? Yeah, I, it's it's. I don't have yeah, we had a copy of it and I don't I didn't bring it with me okay. um, but it's yeah it's not for, I haven't studied it to every nth degree but but uh, uh, has Ryan seen that MOU uh, I believe it was written pretty much word for word off of the MOU that we held with the school for school resource um, I, I think Jan needs to double check it, or Amy needs to double check it for the 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 pay, the the mm -hmm. number amount. Um, but for for the most part, it's just a du duplicate of what we had already yes. entered into previously with the school. I'm good with it. Yeah. Good. Yeah, good. Yeah, it's basically good a contract it. arrangements. What it, what it amounts to at that point? Uh, I mean, I think so. I mean. I, I, I haven't seen the yeah. paperwork side of it. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> Which the MOU could be terminated at any point. Correct. Mm -hmm. so do we need a consensus? I don't even know. That's what we were talking about earlier. I don't know. You're the one that signed it. You, sign, you can sign contracts. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't I meet with Ryan Wednesday just to see what he's found out because, I mean, like I said, with these MOUs, I've received word well above us that everything was legit in terms of the collaboration, but yet I misstepped on the local level just to see if we do indeed have anything, I guess, within our own confines that would prevent us from doing so. Well, I was looking, I couldn't find anything. I was going to say, I haven't found anything either, but that doesn't say, that doesn't mean there's not something there, but yeah. He, so. so I guess what we could do is, if you want to grant me approval, and then I just won't sign anything physically until after Wednesday. Did you talk to Ryan? Yeah, Ryan and I meet 4 o'clock Wednesday. Because he's been supposedly he's supposed to have been researching the last couple of weeks. The last three I, I've got a copy of it, but these guys don't. Yeah. I think it'd be these guys probably ought to get a copy of it, email okay. it to them. To I'll him right after we leave here. Well, okay. Cool. So we'll check your email then. So if you want to grant approval contingent upon approval from city attorney, I'm good with that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so consensus. Okay. So yes. four, three, yeah. nodding at four, nodding at <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? That's to you, Steve. No. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, three, okay. Uh, okay. Sorry. I, one more thing. Did Did you want to mention the ladder trap? Oh, I I I kind of thought Eric would be here. So tomorrow morning at about seven a.m., they're leaving for uh, Lawrenceburg. Um, they they were awarded the, the bid on that ladder truck um, in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. Uh, we purchased it for one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars. You guys approved up to two hundred. Um, there there is a few things that need to be done with vinyl graphics and things like that, but it's n nowhere near going to 
even come close to the 200,000 range. Uh, this is a older truck, but and I haven't seen it, but it everybody that I've talked to that has been down to see it has identified it as a brand spanking new truck. It's 26 years old with only 5,000 miles on it. So when they built the casino, the casino bought them a ladder truck and they basically never used it. So we have confirmation from the manufacturer that it's still serviceable. Um, it will be serviceable for many, many years to come. And uh, we, we believe that we greatly improved our capabilities. That's and it, good. And it's it cheaper than the one we bought from Muncie? It is not well, cheaper than the one we bought. The one we bought from Muncie didn't technically cost the city anything. That was all done through private don donation oh, and sponsorship of, oh, of okay. our industry. Gotcha. And we only paid thirty grand for the one that we bought um, from Muncie, and then we put about forty thousand dollars into the equipment because we didn't have the equipment complement that needed to go on the truck. But this one does. No, but all the equipment all we the have equipment on the current ladder, ladder truck will just go into. Okay, gotcha. I got you. That's, I got you. Good. That's good. Yeah. When, while while we're while it's in in my head, the one thing that popped up when we're talking about the age of the truck and the fact that it's only got five thousand miles, we probably need to look at the date code on all the t on the tires. Yeah. If they haven't put tires on it. That's a good point. It's, it, I I believe that they probably have had made all those maintenance okay. decisions and, and yes, taking and care I, of all I that. didn't think but to ask Eric we'll definitely that, take a look at that but we need to that's check the codes because that's, that's they're getting if they're if they're original they're too old how many miles do you remember how many miles the Monty truck had on it the not for sure but it was in the 35 or 40 thousand miles wow. just, 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 just to be clear engine 93 which is the new fire engine is mileage wise is setting at about 11,000 miles. Wow, so it is definitely a baby. Yeah. Well, the, another important thing to know is, as Eric promised during the meeting, two pieces of equipment are going up for sale. The 1994 ladder truck, obviously, asking price is 50,000. Then the 2019 Rosenbauer, the asking price is 450,000. So even if we don't get those, we get somewhere in the ballpark, it's much, yeah. 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 So it's, and, and the goal is is to get the payment zero. Yeah. So yeah. I, I mean, and, and I believe we'll get there. I think it sounds like it's possible. The value of the of the Rosenbauer that he's putting up for sale right now to buy that truck new is about six hundred fifty thousand dollars with a two year build time. Yeah, the build time's the big thing. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay. Now, is there anything else? <laughs> Teresa. <laughs> Teresa, I'm so sorry. Hi, I'm, I'm, I'm there to much. My name is Teresa Montcher. I live on the Indiana side at 902 Olive Avenue. Um, I have just a couple things. Um, one I'll just go ahead and do it because I know it's coming up right now. Um, it's about um, like another fast food restaurant. Because like, and if you have your, like it's not going to hurt your small businesses. You know, because you have your, I don't know if it's called clientele or something. Like where you're not quite tall, if it's the right word, I get nervous, sorry. No, you're fine. Like the, your people, your, mm -hmm. your main people that's going to go, like the Mexican restaurant or like um, the deli over here. You know, you have your main people, you know, that always go there and they like that food. But like, I don't know how many times, like, we're going to wait in line for McDonald's, you know, or they messed up. I don't know anywhere going to mess up, but like a fast food restaurant, like, why can't we get another, another one in here? And there wouldn't be no cost to you guys, right? We just ask someone to come and help build it. And that we more jobs for our community. It's just, well, I think we need more than just just like our park. We need more, you know. It's a great, great statement you make. Um, couple of considerations. Um, one is they <coughs> somebody else be willing to pay the franchise fees, mm -hmm. which those can be exorbitant sometimes. Uh, so somebody either locally or regionally has to be willing to make that leap. You know, um, even if we make the request or ask of the companies, they're still going to say, "Well, where's your franchisee at?" Or franchise operator. Um, not that it can't be done, but just the other thing to keep in mind. I love the fast food concept. I mean, you know, and, and definitely affordability. If we could have someone local that we could encourage to take that leap, the beauty of that is the money they make that stays here. That stays in the city. It stays in Randolph County. When you have a franchisee come in. There's franchise fees that those fees for running that restaurant, money made, that goes somewhere else. 
and we don't see that. Right. And so, just food for uh, just to, just to think about this differently, because uh, I just listen actually to I've been listening to all these podcasts for small communities development growth, and it's something to think about is when you bring in all these chain restaurants, there's a significant portion of revenue that the community doesn't actually see. It does go somewhere else. Um, not all of it. And I'm not saying they're bad. They're it's great. I love a, a Wendy's hamburger just like the next person. You, you name it. But um, but it's just something to consider because when you have the homegrown, like the Bowser's Barns, you know the world. The beauty of that is it's not only local flavor, but the the revenue stays local. So the community flourishes or, or benefits in more ways than one. So if you've got somebody you think that has a hankering for a certain type of food or has a flair for making a certain type of food, I mean, that is something we would absolutely love to entertain and have discussions with and to see how we could help them. Um, that would be wonderful. So, okay. that's a great suggestion. <laughs> but my other thing is, you know, like how hurricanes happen all around, hurricane, well, all around, but hurricanes, fires, floods, and like not just, I'm thinking not to get together as a community, not just from a church, you know, because mm -hmm. I'm from community, community fellowship church. I don't want just our church or South Salem or mm -hmm. the Wesley Church, um, just that church, you know, like oh, the whole community, yeah, it comes from the community, like like you guys say, who wants to go over and help, you know, fix their homes or, you know, um, I'm like nervous out there, right? I can't no, no, you're fine. I had it in my mind the whole so, time. Oh, like, no, you're fine, words. you're fine. No, like a, like a like a concentrated help effort yeah. from the community as a whole versus yeah. just fragments. Yeah, and we go as a volunteer. Like, hey, you know, like I know over here at this church they have oh for clothing it's going to go mm -hmm. to this place or this place. Mm -hmm. I want to go and help, and I you know I want to go help. You know, I don't know how anybody else feels like. If that was like, say that's our community, I would love for another community just to come over and help us if we're in that need. That's awesome. You know, if something was a disaster, you know, for them to come over and help. Not just from a church, I want our mm -hmm. whole community. And I know, oh, the church, well, we like a good community. You know, like from all you guys, like to say, hey, you know, like at your board meeting, you know, these people need help. We're going to, who wants to volunteer? Mm -hmm. You know, like, I feel like if I could, I would just, if I had money, I would go and just be like, help, you know? That's awesome. That's awesome. But, Do you, is there anything right now, as you say that, is there something right now or somewhere you're thinking that? Well, be, Hawaii, well, and mm -hmm. well, you know, that's a lot. That's a lot. But like, stay in the United States. Then like, um, but there's a storm coming on right now mm -hmm. over there, you know. Yep. Like, but who knows? We don't know the damage yet. Yeah. But there's just like Florida, like um, California always has, you know, fires and mm -hmm. there's people that just lost. And just imagine if you lost your home, you know, and it's not just your home, your community, yeah. you know. I mean, you want to yeah. build it back up, and as strong as our community is, can we come together for what we want? Then let's go help someone else. It's a great point because I think the one thing we've not broadcast enough I think was when was it you or Kobe and somebody else went south a few years ago I remember I think I was still I think I just started office I don't yeah, remember what I've, it was I've done it three times Kobe's done it twice I okay that's what I thought the one thing we haven't done is broadcast that not to tout our own to our own horn but yet to say okay this is what we're go doing right now what else can we throw into the mix to help is that what's the feasibility of a process like that like when you guys have packed up and gone to a, a place to help what's the feasibility of of either making it known to the community if there's any volunteers that want to help is is that a possibility and then and it's not because it's, of it's not really the the assist I, I mean you can absolutely go down there and pitch in and help like move stuff and clear debris and things like that. But the the system through Department of Homeland Security is not built that way. Okay. The the system, the actual system is background checks and you know, confirmation of licensures and, and knowing that the people that they're putting on the on the ground are not criminals and, you know, going to take advantage of the situation. I mm -hmm. think you would find the majority of communities, even though they're in desperate need of help, want the right help that's able to do things mm -hmm. correctly and appropriately so that 
the, the citizens that are in need of help are, are also being protected. Right. That makes sense. I'm sure there's multiple church groups. I'm sure there's multiple ways of, of, of joining correctly, but just going down there is, is not ever a good idea. Right. Plus, it's extremely, extremely dangerous. Right. What I mean, about supplies? Your, your, well, that, that's the other thing. The, the logistics of going down there, I, I mean, on a hurricane deployment, you have no gas, you have no electric, you have no water, you have nothing. So when you get there, if you're out of gas, you're, you're done because there's no filling stations. So, you know, for the most part, that's done by Department of Homeland Security and, and usually National Guard. You're filling up out of tanker trucks in the middle of a highway. Mm -hmm. So it, I mean, the logistics side of it is huge. I mean, when we go, on on a on a mission, you're you're taking three days worth of supplies because you don't know if you'll be back in three days. Right. From from a from a help standpoint, though, what would be the feasibility of like if we did a water bottle drive, even where everybody it had to be a brand new sealed water bottle or packages? I, I'm from a I'm community. sure there's direct avenues to get those resources. To where they need to go, but uh -huh. you know, I, I would work through faith-based organizations. I would, you know, go that route. You know, the Department of Homeland Security is really the only thing I can speak about, and I know it's not safe. There, there's no accommodations or or no creature comforts at all, and they don't really want people just wandering around, right. trying to help. Maybe a a concerted like supply effort would that be a, a a compromise i guess if you will do you think that would be something that would because i love your heart mm -hmm. and and i love the idea of a community reaching out as a whole because that's really powerful um so i wonder if i Teresa, what i would recommend to you is come up and see me tomorrow or, or wednesday and I'll, I'll put you in touch with somebody that may be able to assist getting you deployed and then after you get deployed within the system then then maybe that will help give you some guidance to exactly what it is because it's really organized chaos is what it is okay. so um, maybe going down a little bit protected would be the best way for you to get a real first-hand view of what's going on yeah well at, at our age, we're no longer going to go and, and build things or rebuild, but uh, we have in the past. We donate money to World Central Kitchen. World Central. They go in and feed these people, and they're recognized by uh, the, uh, I, I guess they work with Homeland Security, but uh, right now they're feeding people in the Ukraine, and they, they've... Uh, they go to the hurricane places. And, and I think the Red Cross is the same way. Uh, I just like the idea of feeding people because yeah. they feed everybody yeah. that walks in the door. Awesome. And then that means uh, Steve, if he's down there on, yeah. uh, you know, volunteering. Or somebody that lost their home. Or somebody else or this yeah, young lady. Yep. Any, anybody that walks in the door, they feed them. And, awesome. and we feel like we're helping that way, where, whereas we, you know, we're not employed. A position now where we can go and physically help, right. but we can put money in the pot. Yeah, and and I would recommend that church groups or any organization that that, that you feel is is capable of garnering some support. Uh, well, well, sending water, but uh, money. Yeah, uh, especially the ones that where ninety cents on it, out of every dollar goes to the to the actual yeah, thing right? yeah, yeah to the actual thing I, yeah. I you know i'm not much in favor of giving money to people that 60 cents goes yeah. to the project and 40 cents goes to administration yeah exactly but, uh, there are there are good ones out there yeah. and uh, um, that's a worthwhile idea world people, people need to think about it. world central kitchen world central kitchen okay. um started a few years ago by a chef and i'm going to reach out to john hannon because i know he's been phenomenal at that and then I'll get with our pastor too and kind of see if there's something that we could do more collaboratively and more yeah more collaboration with the Facebook yeah, yeah. Could help too. Um, 
Yeah, because that's a that's a great idea. And Pastor Rich, well, he probably would be. That's where I'm getting to fellowship. But uh, I missed the last thing, so I can't go. Yeah. I think I've got his. I think almost positive I've got his number. Uh, okay, super. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's awesome. Um, right. Anything else? If not, the day of the next council meeting is Monday, September 25th. And keep in mind, there's a public hearing at the beginning of that meeting. And then the day of the Board of Public Works meeting is also that day at 1 p.m. I would entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. We have first, we have second. I'll second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 aye.